It's dangerous to be a pastor's child. Dangerous to be a preacher's child. Because you find yourself many times ending up in a story in the pulpit. My children right now are saying, oh, Lord. So I won't say which one. I won't even, I won't even say that it, it, is, it is a story of my children. I say, once upon a time, there's a father taking his daughter to school. The father and the daughter got into a conversation about what the daughter was learning in school, and the father became interested and inquisitive and listening to what the daughter was learning and became concerned about the sex education and the health aspect that they were teaching in school, and the father began to talk to the daughter. The father began to tell the daughters, about her body. The father began to tell the daughter some intricate things and some intimate things so the young daughter could understand about her body. And her, his daughter, his daughter yelled, oh, dad, stop. The father said, why? She became, because I'm uncomfortable. The daughter became uncomfortable with the father talking to her about her body and about who she was. I share that with you because today I'm going about to speak about some things that might make some of you uncomfortable. It may make some of you uneasy because truth is not easy to swallow. Don't ever be confused. Truth is not easy to accept. The truth about other people is easy to accept. But the truth about yourself is very difficult. So I do not seek to hurt anyone. I do not seek to debate with anyone but we seek truth. Stand with me for our scripture lesson this morning. It'll be taken from the book of 1 Corinthians 11 and Genesis chapter 2. 1 Corinthians 11 and Genesis chapter 2. I'm perusing the congregation. Sydney, come on down here. Jamelin, your son? Yes. I can't remember his name. The one, the one that's ready to come. Huh? Joshua, come on. Sydney and Joshua. Just stand right here. I was going to call Tyler and C4, but they're working. Oh, no. Oh, C4 is not working anymore? Oh, I thought he was behind the camera. <laughs> Just turn and face the congregation. Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning with verse 3. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is man. And the head of Christ is God. Now you haven't digested that yet because that just choked you in the throat. (laughs) 
Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it is shameful for a woman to be shorn or shaved, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and the glory of God. A man ought not to cover his head, for he is the image and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. I got choked again. For man is not from woman, but woman from man. Nor was man created for the woman, but woman for the man. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Verse 11, nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as woman came from man, even so man also comes through woman, but all things are from God. Standing before me right now, this is a girl. This is a boy. It seems obvious, but in these days, it is not obvious. Hear your pastor today. Standing before me and presented before you is a girl who will be a woman and a boy, which will be a man. And what they are experiencing now will prepare them for what they are to be. What they go through right now. See, I don't care about teaching them the commandments and you teaching them all these things, but when Sydney hits puberty, and when Joshua hits puberty, the church is silent. The church has nothing to say when they go through the changes in their bodies and in their lives. Don't come and speak about them when they do actions when you were never there for them when they were going through their transitions. You can go back to your seat. Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to hurry up, but I'm going to take my time. Thank you, Brother Walker. If we don't speak on these things here, and if our young people do not hear these things here, you cannot assume that they will hear truth somewhere else. Genesis chapter 2, very quickly, beginning with verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of the ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord took, God had taken from man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 
Pray with me as we think on the message today. I am woman. I am woman. And, and, and ease your mind that a man is going to talk about women. It is not popular today. We got women's ministries, and we got men's ministries, and we got family ministries in the church, and all these ministries, the folk are still falling apart. So allow a man to speak about women prayerfully from the perspective of God and his word that we might be different than what the world tells us we are. Our Father and our God, have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. One day I'm going to change this podium. Isn't it big? It's, it's, it's big. I, I've been putting up with this podium for three and a half years. We're going to change it. The aspect of being a woman, as I mentioned, is dangerous for a man to speak about women these days. You better come correct, preacher. In light of, Sister Farrell knows about this, in light of a bunch of ministers putting their foot in their mouth. We have one minister not long ago who stood up in an Adventist pulpit and said when a woman got, gets married, she, uh, she, she uh, let me get it right, she accepts being raped. Needless to say, he was let go. And this was not a young minister. This was a minister of over 30 years. Hello. But we live in a time of equal rights. Women as good as men. Women capabilities. So I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Don't bring that stuff to me. I'm not interested in discussions or debates about who should be what and who should do what. I'm interested in our young men and our young women knowing who they are. And once you know who you are, you cannot be manipulated by others into believing or doing something you were not meant to do or being something you were not meant to be. Let me say this unequivocally. A man is not a woman. And a woman is not a man. Even though the man has estrogen in his body and the woman has testosterone in her body, yet the two are not the same. There is a difference. And I don't want to just spend time on the aspect of them being different, I want to look at the aspect of what God created. For he created male and female, he created man and woman, and some like to believe that there's a difference in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, a difference of focus. But the reason I love the Bible is that the Bible is the only ancient text here, your pastor today. The Bible is the only 
ancient text. The Hebrew scripture is the only ancient text that has written about the creation of woman intentionally. You can read the Enuma Elish. You can read the, 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 the Gilgamesh epic. You can read the Bhagat Vegeta. You can read all the other ancient writings of all the other uh, religions as I have, and you will only find in the Hebrew scriptures the creation of woman done intentionally by her God. Which means that she is not an afterthought. The woman is not just placed there for the benefit of the man. Even though she is placed there for the benefit of the man, she is placed there not just for that. You're your pastor now. We're going somewhere. When we look, Adam spent time with God alone before he spent time with Eve. Eve spent time with God alone before she spent time with Adam. Mm -hmm. God pulled Adam out of the ground, made Adam of the dust of the ground, pulled him out with the dust, with the water, breathed into him. Hear your pastor. So Adam came from the womb of the earth. That's why she's called Mother Earth, Mother Nature. Because he was pulled from the womb, but as Adam was pulled from the womb, Eve was not made from the earth. Eve was made from a rib. Man from the dust, woman a bone. Mighty quiet. She is called the mother of all living. She's called what? The mother of all living. Not the mother of humans. She is the mother of all living, which means she is the representative, she is representative of everything that anyone can be. Mm -hmm, okay. It, it, it means that she represents an all life that exists comes through her and exists in her. Mm -hmm. You're still not there yet. She becomes what Mother Earth was to Adam. As Adam came through the earth, so everything comes now through her womb. Still not with me. See, that's where we get the word Woman. That's the English word. Woman. Man with a womb. But that's the problem. You just see her as a person with a womb and you misunderstand the womb is supposed to be a sanctuary. Okay. The womb is what? A sanctuary. Your body is the temple of God. And so for a woman, the body is the temple of God. And the womb is her most holy place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The womb is her most holy place. And in the Bible, only a high priest. Not just a priest, but a high priest was the only one allowed in the most holy place. And if a person went into the most holy place that wasn't holy, that wasn't fit 
to do ministry in the holy place. There were bells put around them and a rope so that if they entered where they shouldn't have entered, they would drop dead and the others would have to pull him out. But now we have individuals that don't understand their most holy place. And they let any Negro have access to what only one was supposed to have access to. You see, a, a man drops seed. A man drops seed. A woman makes it live. You're not there yet. The difference between a man and a woman, number one, is that a man will give something that a woman makes better. A man will, a man will see something that a woman will bring to fruition. A man will drop an acorn, but a woman is what will make it an oak. If she knows who she is. Today, women are busy trying to be men. Hmm? Women are engaged in proving their worth to be equal to men. And while you're spending time trying to be equal to man, you've lost who you are. Because no man, I don't care how many surgeries he has, can be a woman. And no woman, I don't care how many surgeries she has, can be a man. You have settled in trying to become like a man because you don't know who you are. Your focus and attention is now to cater to a man, to prove your worth to a man, to become man-like. The wisdom of self-knowledge has been lost for a pursuit of becoming who you were never meant to become. I hope you're hearing me today. You are woman. You were pulled from the rib. You, you, you know the story. You, you, you were pulled from the side. I'm, I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm going to end with that because I'm going to get into the, the function of the rib. Because too many women have become spare ribs. You are woman, you, you are life. She is the mother of all living, which, which is a cosmological premise. Hear your pastor now. You being the mother of all living, Eve being the mother of all living, means that she is the microcosm of the macrocosm. That anything you can find in nature, you can find in a woman. Don't you know, woman? You correlate to the move of the moon. You correlate to the seasons. You are not taught this in westernized teaching and western civilization. You only know about pills and popping pills and keeping your, your, your period from coming and stopping certain things so you can act like a man. And 
People in laboratories are studying how they can keep you from being a woman so that you can have man-like qualities in your physical nature. And the church is quiet. Church is silent about what is going on in science. The church is silent about what is going on in society. The church is silent about what is going on in politics. Because you must be silent now. Because if you speak the way I'm speaking today, it is not politically correct. And when you are not politically correct, somebody's going to have a problem with you. You can't even speak about certain things in Adventist church. They'll They'll, they'll put you in a category, oh, you old school, or they'll put you in a category, oh, you new school, or you're conservative, or you're progressive, or you're this, or you're that. Can we just get back to saying what the word says? I hear preachers all the time getting up, if it ain't in the word, it ought not be heard, and then progress to start saying what ain't in the word. Woman, you don't understand your own movements because you're trying to be what you are not. Certain times of the month, see, this is not even in my notes. Can I talk? Can I talk to you? See, some women get pregnant, they don't even know they're pregnant. They don't know they're pregnant because they don't know their own body. They don't know they're pregnant because they've let so many men drop seeds in them. That they don't even know which seed it's from. When you come to a point when you don't even know which seed your womb is nurturing. Which seed your sanctuary is housing. It's problematic. And it's not only problematic for you, it'll be problematic for the next generation. When you look at society, everything we are dealing with is the failure of the home. Say that again. When you look at society, Dr. O.C. White is sitting right there. We have Sister Bridget Walker sitting right there. We have Sister Shirley Thomas sitting right there. All of them dealing in areas with the misgivings of what's going on in the home. Doctor dealing with kids with problems, social worker dealing, police officer dealing. Our society is messed up because our homes are messed up and our homes are messed up because a man doesn't know how to be a father and a woman doesn't know how to be a mother. And we can walk around doctor this, this that, elder this, Elder that, deacon this, deacon that, but don't even know how to drop wisdom into the minds of our youth so that they can know who they are. We settle for titles with no power. Now if my wife was home for 11 years, we had first two years of us having children, her mother was able and willing to stay with us. And then when we moved to Texas, her mother didn't come with us. And so we decided to live on one salary with my wife staying home to be a home technician. It was a choice. It was intentional. That our children won't have to wake up 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning to be shipped off to someone else. To raise them. To pour ourselves into them. And watch this. Even when you pour yourself into them, at a certain age, they're going to get some other people to pour into them. But at least now you give them a choice of who they are to be. Whereas children growing up outside of home because mama is busy trying to be equal to daddy. And all of them are working outside the home with somebody else watching the children. Yeah, you can stay quiet on that one. 
Now 28 year olds are being grandmothers. Because their 14 year old daughter is pregnant. And we wonder what is going on? What is the church doing? What is the church saying? What is the church preaching? What is the church teaching? No, it's just about folk arguing about what position they could keep. That's what church is involved in now. And if a man can preach and if a woman can preach, who cares? Who cares who stands behind the pulpit as long as it's the word of God? Mm. You have settled. Learn your seasons. Learn your summer months. Learn your autumn months. Learn your winter months. Learn your spring months so that you can better understand yourself. Why is my here not behaving itself? during this time of the season? Why are my fingernails, why is my skin changing? You don't even understand the seasons of your own life, much less the seasons around you. No mother to sit at the feet of anymore to teach the daughter who she is. The daughter's left to look at magazines to recognize that she doesn't look like who's on the magazine then have a self-image problem, a self-worth issue because of what she sees. See, young black women, young women, the issue is not whether you can twerk, but whether you can work. The issue is not whether you're, you have, you know and understand your beauty the, under, the, the issue is whether you understand and know your duty. If someone has taught you, if someone has made you to know, so is, is it possible, can, can I give you insight into the Lanstonian report? Can I give you the hermeneutics of Sylv Sylvesterology? Woman was made from a rib. Mm. Dr. White, you know I'm going to do my research. And since time is already spent, I'm going to cut this short in righteousness. Woman was made from a rib. That's a blessing. And you already know the Ellen White comment she's taken from the rib, from the side not the head to rule over man, not, nor from under his feet to be trampled upon man. You already know that stuff. But let's go further. She, she's made from a rib, from, from the bone. And, 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 and I grew up and preachers lied. So I won't lie to you. Preachers, I, I heard preachers growing up say, yeah, and man has one less rib than the woman, which is anatomically proof that God took a rib from the woman. Lie. Both men and women that are normal have 12 sets of ribs, 24 ribs. But they're broken down into three sections. You ready? You have the first section called true ribs. Called what? True ribs. You have a second section called false ribs. Say false ribs. And then you have a third section called floating ribs. I didn't make this up. This is my research. This is what doctors have prescribed. This is what doctors have. What do you have? True ribs, first seven. False ribs, next two or three. And then floating ribs. And so 
If you want to know who you are first, you got to identify, are you true? Are you false? Or are you just floating? What kind of rib are you? Now notice, a true rib, a false rib, a floating rib, there's nothing there about a spare rib. Now, thank God, you, some of you women, need to stop being spare ribs. A spare rib is somebody who sucks on the bone, eats off the meat, and throws it away. You know what? I'm going to say it again just for me. I said a spare rib is not biblical. Just go to Tony Romo's. Just go to some barbecue. Uh, Pastor, we don't eat pork. You're, you're a pork rib or you're a beef rib or you're a lamb rib. I don't care if you're any of those ribs because all of them are spare. And all people do is eat the meat, suck the bone, and throw it away. The function of the rib, it is connected, the seven true ribs are connected to the sternum, which, are, which serves as, number one, protection for vital organs. And number two, it allows, is allowed to expand so that the heart can pump and the, the lungs can breathe. I'll say that again. The function of the rib is serves as a protection and the capability for that what, which it protects in order to function and breathe. When you are what God has called you to be, woman, you function as a protector. I know you thought your husband was supposed to protect you, but you protect him. You protect his dreams. You protect his vision. Let me talk to you plain. Every mistake I've made in my life has, been come, has come from not listening to my mama and not listening to my wife. I said every mistake can be traced back to me not listening to my mother or not listening to my wife. And every blessing that I've experienced has come from me listening to my mother and me listening to my wife for they protect me. Don't you know that your Bible says if a man prays and doesn't listen to his wife that God doesn't hear his prayer? Men? She is your protection. But how can you protect someone you are trying to be like? You have forfeited who you are to try to be who you are not. Come on, play for me. Come on, play for me. I got I to gotta end this. See, I still let you out of 130, James. Amen. First amen James said today. Don't you love it? We just have a good time. Come on, come on, get the musicians back here. This is how I want to end. I can't really finish this, Sydney. God 
made Adam and spent time with Adam before he made Eve. Which means that he was complete as a man without a woman. And his completeness came in his connection to God. That he had private time with God before he had public time with a woman. Teach, Doc, okay. Then God, Elder Stacy, puts him to sleep so that man can know, Christy, that he has no supervision in what he does with the creation of woman. God says, I'm putting you to sleep because I don't need a supervisor. I don't need anybody, anybody to tell me what I'm about to do. You know the, the old saying that when God created Adam, he, he was a construction worker. But when he created Eve, he was an architect. That's not the focus of what I want to share, that when God created Adam, he spent time with Adam. You know, some of us are so Sabbath-driven, we rush the creation to get to the Sabbath. Instead of understanding and taking the time to see what God did. You see, present truth is not the Sabbath. Sorry to mess some of you Adventists up. Present truth is about knowing what a man is and knowing what a woman is. Because in the present day, that's not known. In the present day, that's not accepted. In the present, talking about last day prayers. Can we, I, I, I appreciate the last days, but at Seventh day Adventist, last day started when Jesus died. We are in the end times. Bible says in God, God presented her to Adam. God spent time with him. God spent time with her. They were complete in and of themselves. So I don't want to hear anybody from Big T talking about, I got to find my better half. God didn't make half or nothing God didn't make any half he made one whole male one whole female one plus one equals one talking about I'm looking I'm looking for my rib baby you 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 can't find your rib you came out of a rib Private time. What do your pastor say? Private time. Pri private time. You spend private time with God before you establish public relationships. Talking about, talking about, talking about these are my private parts. Private parts. What private parts you talking about? You done slept with three, four, five men. Your private part is a public terminal. Before you can honor your private part, you have to honor the privacy of your life. 
with him. Did you hear what I said? One of the things that I told my wife, I talked to my wife, and I said something that truly bothers me is hear my kids on the phone from sun up to sundown. And it makes me wonder where's their private time? Where, where, where's the quiet time? Where, where's the time that you spend? getting to know yourself without interruption. You can manifest, you can manifest how much time you spent with God in terms of how much time and the, the, the character of your relationship with others. Some of us jump from relationship to relationship. No time uncomfortable to be by yourself. Can't stand being by yourself. How can you not like being by yourself and think somebody else will like being with you? Private time. is where you find out what it means to be a woman. Did you hear me, young ladies? Did you hear me, young ladies? It is in your private time, not your social media time, not your talking with your friends time, not even church time, but it is your private time that you find out who you are in God. What he made you from. How you are the mother of all living. What your capabilities are. Then when you sit at the feet of older women that should be able to pour into you rather than trying to relive their youth through you. Older women talking about I need to fit into this. I need to still, I need to look good. Who's watching me? Fool. You haven't transferred your most holy place to your most holy place. 60, 70 years old trying to act like you're 20. Well, 60 is the new 30, Pastor. Fool. 70 is the new 50, Pastor. Fool. Youth is for strength. Age is for wisdom. You trying to, you old and trying to get out what 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 you say elder stacy what you say elder stacy elder stacy said she heard the song and try to do a beyonce move and she said the next day I can't finish this. You got it? Let youth be for strength. Let age be for wisdom. And let strength sit at the feet of wisdom. This world we live in doesn't honor elders. This world that we live in doesn't honor those who have experience under their belt. They can continually press upon older people to be young. Get your gray out. Don't show people how old you are. 
This will take the wrinkles away. This will gird up what gravity has brought down. And so young people now see you as competition rather than collaboration. Are you hearing your pastor today? I am woman. Find that in God. Somebody today, young woman, old woman, immature woman, mature woman. I'll be honest with you, as a man, I've had to go through experiences to learn the nature of a woman. Because I wasn't taught this, I watched it. But sometimes you can watch things you'll never understand. I watched my mother. I watched her navigate life. Only by the grace of God, she had the strength to raise us. But being a woman is precious. Being a woman is God-like. And do not forfeit what God has made you to be to becoming like a man. Honor God with the first fruits of your substance. That's not just money. That's not just agriculture. That's the first fruit of yourself to know who you are. Someone today wants to give themselves anew to God. You've lost your way in trying to be another. God has called you back to be a woman today all the feelings you have inside all the the directions you have to represent him and to pass on that wisdom to younger women homes are falling apart because nobody knows how to make a home everybody knows how to make a a life for a boss but nobody knows how to make a home for themselves but today, Lord, make me the woman you would have me to be. And not a spare rib for someone else. I invite you to stand where you are, if that is your declaration. Father, and I